blessed Sunday. Amen. And I'm just going to look straight into the camera. And the first thing I want to do is just to celebrate and just honor the life of those that have given up their life for, for the freedom and the safety of our nation. Um, it's Memorial Day, and I just want to give a shout out. Now, those that really fought and those that died in the course of the battles are gone, and they really don't know what else we are doing right now. But if you are a widow out there, you lo or you lost your father in, in the war or something, um, this is a special shout out to you. We're, we're thanking God for the life of your, your loved ones, and we're just praying that um, every time you think about the memory and the great things that they that they did for us as a nation, you will say a word of prayers to appreciate them. And on behalf of the church, we want to say happy Memorial Day to everyone. And um, I don't know how excited you are today, but I am really excited. And I do want to make a confession here. And that's the fact that I do miss everybody. I really, really miss everyone. And um, I can hardly wait to see you back. But let me ask you this. When we get back to church, what is your post-COVID-19 story going to be? What's it going to be? Yeah, because we're all going to have stories. And some people are going to come giving sweet stories of how they have grown through the crisis and how things have changed for them, how they learned new skills, how they built new relationships, how they got closer to the Lord. But what's your case going to be? I, I like to put it in the word of um, Pastor Andy Stanley. I love the way he said it. He said, if you do not get gain from the pain of COVID-19, it's a shame. We are all required um, to go through this situation that we will find ourselves and just begin to see what the Lord has waiting for us on the other side. Again, we'll miss everyone. And I just want to welcome you to part four of our ongoing series. Um, we, the, the, the title of our series is Spiritual Discipline. And we've had about three weeks of wonderful teaching. And I'm just going to jump into the teaching for today, which is titled um, The Discipline of Meditation. Amen. I, you know, one of the things that I always want us to come back to every time we think about this series um, discipline of meditation, discipline of prayers, discipline of the word. Oh my God, they didn't, um, Leon, would you agree with me that Leon did a fantastic job last week? Um, I just thank God for the life of that um, young minister and what the Lord is using him to do. And I, I can assure you that the best is yet to come for every one of us um, in Jesus' name. Now let me quickly um, make this easy for you by explaining what we mean by discipline and why is it necessary why didn't i just say um the title of the teaching is meditation why did we have to have the discipline of meditation the first thing we need to understand about discipline discipline as a word if we bring it out it is just something that you do um like observing a rule or um, a, a pattern of life that leads to a desired result because life by itself comes with rules you know, discipline, being disciplined does not mean that you are enjoying what you are doing, but you are doing it anyhow because it is important for you to be able to get that desired result. I always like, every time I talk about discipline, I love to use the athletes as an example. Um, I remember reading one of the autobiography of the late Kobe Bryant, and one of the things that I learned about Kobe is that um, when he was still active with the Lakers, they usually do their trainings around 6 a.m. in the morning. But in that article, I read that Kobe gets there like 4 a.m. and trains almost two hours before his mates start coming in. And he was doing this continuously every day. He had a set number of shots that he has to make daily. This was like discipline. Now, I believe he didn't enjoy it. I believe... It was just discipline. He just knew that this is the rule that I must observe. This is, these are things that I must do for me to be able to get the desired result. Now, the discipline, the spiritual discipline are things that you need to do, you need to observe for you to be able to achieve some level of spiritual fruitfulness and, and for you to be able to get results in your spirituality. There are disciplines that is important for the growth of your faith. 
And so I just want us to remember that. And the first thing I want to do is to talk about meditation. For, for example, what is meditation? Let's even look at it both in dictionary terms and in all terms. Now, meditation, as we all know, is not about you folding your hands. It's not about you taking a weird position and, and, and hoping that your body will walk, you will walk away from your own body. Now, that's weird. And that's not what we are talking about here. Um, but, you know... In, 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 in a Christian terms, meditation is the heart of reasoning with God in light of his word. You know, reasoning with God in light of his word. You know, having that thought moment, that moment when you direct your focus and your mind towards the things and the instructions of God. That is meditation. You know, it's, it's, it's that point when you subject your mind with quality reasoning. You're trying to um, figure out what is the scripture saying? The end point always of meditation is usually understanding. You come out with understanding. You come out with insight. It's like meditation takes you to that aha moment when you say, yes, I think this is what the Lord is expecting of me. Amen. I'm going to quickly share um, a quick scripture with you guys. Uh, you, you know, that's when we're talking about meditation, what is meditation? Is that moment of deep connection, that moment when everything else is blocked, but your mind is just settled on the word and what the Lord is saying. I'm going to quickly look at um, the book of Joshua 1.8. It's one of my favorite scriptures as well. Um, I have Matthew 6.33. And, I mean, most of you know my favorite scriptures. I say this all the time. Um, Joshua 1.8 is that scripture that gave me the sense of responsibility as a believer when I began to see that um, if I must make it as a Christian, if I must um, fulfill my, 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 the obligation of my faith work, um, I have to be responsible, I have to be accountable. Uh, in that book, the Bible said, study this book of instruction continually, meditate on it day and night, so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then, I love the New Living Translation. It says, only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. And so the, 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 my biggest interest there is the, is, the, is the B part of that scripture that says, meditate on it day and night. In other words, focus your thoughts on my word. In other words, let your eyes be singled on this word. Ponder on it. Reason with me. You know, I told you that... Meditation is a, is, a, is a way that you reason with God in light of his word. So reason with me. And then from that, a revelation of what instruction that I want to pass on to you will be generated. That's why it says when you ponder on it day and night, so you will sure to obey. Because when you get that instruction, then you will now come to a place of obedience. And then your life will begin to experience fruitfulness. Praise the Lord. I also like to look at Psalm 1, verse 1 to 3, um, which is also a very important scripture. It says, Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or stand around with sinners, or join in with mockers. But they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They are like trees planted along the river bank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither, and they prosper in all they do. Meditating on it day and night. That's what we do. And that's what we are expected to do with the word of God. Come on, let's just, wherever you are in your home, why don't you just raise your hands unto heaven and just ask the Lord to speak to you. Precious Holy Spirit, we open our hearts to receive you. And we just want to be that good soil that your word will find root and, and will grow and our life will be better for it in the mighty name of Jesus. We block away every distraction, everything that will hinder us as we keep our focus on this sermon in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, I yield myself to your leadership, precious Holy Spirit, that you will speak through me, that you make your word of effect in the life of your children, and, and you will bring sense out of all that we'll be saying today in the name of Jesus. Father, we bless and honor you. At the end of the day, let the end point of our life bring glory to your name forever and ever. 
In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, I, I, there's this organization that I usually um, do life with. Um, I'm one of their um, facilitators or, part, uh, or people that join them to develop disciples around the world. And they, they're known as WDA, World Disciples, the Discipleship Association. Um, I love the way they simplified the purpose of discipleship. They said, um, we, are, we, we are taught that the reason why we're raising disciples is to raise people that would think and feel and act like Jesus. So everything about discipleship is, is, is built into three, three words. To think, to feel, and to act like Jesus. You know, the biggest demand of our faith is thinking. Our faith places the demand on us to think. And most times, and that's to think in the light of the world. Because you see, when you meditate on God's words, it gives you God's perspective. Meditating on God's words makes you to think like God. Because God's way of thinking is revealed through his words. And that's why it is important for us to be able to meditate. Praise the Lord. I want to quickly jump straight into the facts on meditation. Um, and I want you to bring out your note and just flow with me. I'm going to try and do a little bit of teaching um, this morning. Um, how many of you know that I love to teach? All right. So um, don't worry. The encouragement will come with it. But um, take, the teaching will help you more. Um, so take the words. And number one fact about meditation is the fact that faith is developed when we meditate on God's words. Our faith is developed when we, med- when we focus our thoughts on God's word. It develops our faith. Now guess what? The flip side, fear is developed when we focus our thoughts on the devil's words or on, on, on Satan's lies. How many of you know people that focus on Satan's lies? You know, a lot of people are already talking about post COVID-19 experience, you know, some people are already meditating because let me tell you something, whether you meditate on the fear, on the circumstances and the situations of your life, uh, or, or you meditate on God's word, you are meditating anyway. So every one of us meditates. So if I ask you now, do you ever meditate? You will no, 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 pastor, I don't meditate. You do meditate. Let me tell you how you meditate sometimes in your situation. You meditate through the process called worrying. When you worry, you meditate. That's the beautiful thing. You know, a lot of people are so worried about life after, po- after COVID-19. I, I hear some people say, no, you know, you know I, I feel that the, things will be so bad. Um, there will be no more jobs. There will be, this, they can't, they're meditating already. And the product of their meditation is that negativity that is coming out. You know, even meditation can... Some people meditate into bitterness and anger. How many of you know somebody who has just sat down and just think of how bitter they were about someone? I, I should have done this to her. I should have done this to him. I, I should have showed, showed him this. I should have done crazy stuff. I should have gotten back at him and all at her. This is a form of meditation. So one of the facts about meditation is that fear is developed. When we meditate on Satan's lies. Hallelujah. Also, meditation moves God's word from our head to our heart. You know, the best position or the best place that God's word can really find value and be able to improve and affect our life positively is in our heart. Because our life is stirred from our heart. Our actions start from our heart. Sin renewal, re- re- transformation, and everything starts from the heart. Now, in the course of meditation, as you begin to ponder on God's words, you move God's word from your head to your heart. A lot of people come to church and they get God's word on their head. They have head knowledge. They know what the Bible said. They, some can even give you the scripture or the verse. But very few 
will act on the word. Now, before you can act on God's word, the word of God has to be planted in your heart. That's why I love David. David in Psalm 119 verse 11 said, That word have I hid in my heart that I will not sin against you. David knew the right place to put the word of God so that his life and his actions will show for it. And this is what you do when you meditate. Meditation moves the word of God from your head to your heart. Amen. Lastly, another fact about meditation is the fact that meditation is the most common activity among all religions. Almost every religion meditates. Almost everybody meditates. You know, meditation is like a mind walk. It's like taking your mind to the gym. It's like building your mind when you meditate. Now, a lot of people, especially in the kingdom, are a little bit sensitive. If I had not seen meditation in the Bible, I would have really thought from what I learned growing up as a young Christian, I would really think meditation is only for, you know, some kind of people that don't serve God and that, that sit in a weird environment and just, you know, repeat one word continuously. No. The scripture actually expect us to meditate is a demand of our faith praise the lord and the key point on our meditation is the word of god you know somebody said that when you put, keep your focus on the word what you get is distress he said when you keep your focus within yourself what you get is depression he said, but when you keep your focus on the word of God, you'll be at rest. I pray that will be your story in Jesus' name. Now, let me quickly jump into the ways we can meditate. I know most of you know the importance. Most of you know that this is a spiritual demand. That's why we call it the discipline of meditation. The, the, the fact that it might not be easy, you might not understand how to do it, but it is important for your spirituality to be solid. For your faith to be, to be built, you have to get involved into the discipline of meditation as often as possible. And when I say ways we can meditate, I'm, 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 I'd like us to continue to put the discipline behind the word. You know, and, and meditation is not just closing your eyes, like I said, it's not, you know, um, meditating on your worries and on your problem and your situation, like I said. Um, worrying is also a form of meditation, like I already explained to you guys. But the most important thing about meditation, um, let me first of all, I, I want to quickly share something with you. You know, I was doing a research. I did a little research on meditation generally because I wanted to look at it from scientific perspective. Um, because I know that at the end of the day, science usually will confirm what the Bible says. Uh, and so when they say um, the science discovered, the point is that you only discover what already exists. So it was there before. You just found out, oh, good for you. The Bible is always ahead of science. Um, and, and I was reading something on Harvard, um, Harvard um, Business School, and it was something to do with meditation. And I also read another one online on one, a, a, a very good resource center called Headline. And I just, I'm just going to summarize here some of the importance of meditation. They call it benefits of meditation. Um, meditation reduces stress. Meditation controls anxiety. Meditation promotes emotional health. Meditation enhances self-awareness. They say meditation lengthen, um, um, lengthen attention span. Meditation may reduce age-related memory loss. Meditation can generate kindness. How? Meditation may help fight addiction. Isn't that a good news for everyone who is struggling with addiction at this point? Meditation improves sleep. I can testify to that. Because there was a time I, I, I also had, my mind would keep wandering in the night. I, I, I'm just thinking of ideas and thinking of new things. And it just kept messing up my sleep. But even a doctor who was not a pastor, when I went to see him about my sleep issue, that was one of the first things he told me. That you need to, um, do you meditate? I said, of course, but maybe I need to do better. Also, it helps control pain. 
Then also he said it can decrease blood pressure. Now that is from the secular angle, from science. Now I want to look at ways we can, ways we can meditate um, before we go to um, the benefit of meditation as a Christian. Ways we can meditate, number one, is on God's word. Meditating on God's word, according to Joshua 1.8, your ability to focus your thought on God's word and his instruction. And when you are meditating on God's word, the, your, your, your biggest objective or purpose is to get deeper, not necessarily further. Deeper is always better than further. You know, a lot of people, God bless you if you are one of those reading um, cover to cover. I love it. I've done it before. I still do it sometimes. Um, read Genesis to Revelation. That's good. I have a lot of scriptures you are reading every day. But the most important thing, better than the, the how far, is the how deep you are. The depth of your knowledge of God's word comes from your ability to meditate and ponder on those words. Praise the Lord. You know, we get spiritual nutrition from the word of God through meditation. The word does no good to you when you do not get the real nutrients, the real why and the, the deep understanding of what God is talking about. So that's one of the ways we meditate and which is the key and the most important way. Another way we can meditate is to meditate on God's personality. God has a personality. He's a good God. He's a, he's, he's a loving father. He's a merciful God. He's forgiving. He's a kind God. He's a promoter. He's a protector. He's a, he's a provider. Imagine if you sit down and just ponder on God's personality. If you, if you can see God, if you can see God in the, in, the, in, the, in the highs of your heart as a provider, who will you run to when you need provision? If you can see God in the highs of your heart as a healer, when that sickness, when that pain, when that report comes to you, who will you best go to? If you see God as kind and, and a provider, if you see God as, as a promoter, if you see God as the one who protects, every time there is need for protection, you think about God. You know, the sense of personality gives us security when we look at God. I want us to remember that. We'll come back to that as well. Also, on the other hand, I want us to look at one of the ways we can meditate is on God's testimonies. God's testimonies. Hallelujah. God's testimonies. The things that God has done in our lives. And that's the reason why I always tell people that's the advantage why the scripture is there for you. That's why the Bible, you see, the Bible is full of testimonies of God. How God has worked with his children from the beginning and how he has done so many things. And he wants us to put these things in remembrance, to continue to know that he delivered the children of Israel from slavery. He took them through the wilderness and he saw them through a lot of things. If you sit down and if you begin to ponder on God's faithfulness over time, you know, I, I came to realize that one of the ways that I can strengthen the, the faith of my children is to share my testimonies with them. And it has really helped me for a very long time. You know, so sometimes I just sit with them and I just tell them stories. I love to tell them stories of how God has taken me through faces in life. It just lights up something inside of them. It just makes them see God in a, in a light. They see God in a way and they're like, if God can do this for dad, he will do it for me as well. You know, the, the, the common one that I usually tell them is one particular testimony. I'm not going to share it here now. Uh, one particular testimony of what happened before we got into the U.S. with my family. And I usually tell them that story. And I love to explain exactly, especially to my, the, the first guy who was part of the testimony. I would tell him how God used him to make something happen to us. And I, every time I say it, it, it will just be blushing. And you can see that sense of what in his face. That, oh, so God used me to bless this family for us to come to the U.S. Awesome. You know, and, and, and it's just amazing how simple testimony can connect people to your faith and, and I'm, I'm just I'm just encouraging you as a parent out there uh, if, even if you do not have so much and you, you don't have so much you 
talk to your children about the scripture. Remember to share your faith and how God has been faithful to you. Every time they think about what God has done for their mom, their dad, it just it lights up something inside of them. They feel encouraged to serve him. The same thing with your home believing friends. I'm talking, to, I'm talking to the young adults now. I know you do not, um, you do not have a lot of time because um, you, you don't want to be choking them up with your faith and you don't want to always put in Christianity in their face. But how about if you tell them your story? How about you tell some of them that, you know, I have a story to tell you. God has been faithful in my life. They, I just... I'm just so excited. I think I should share this with you. So you know where I'm coming from. When we meditate on God's testimonies, it does something in our heart. Sometimes I just sit down in the morning. After my normal Bible studies, I just sit down and I'm just thinking about all the things that the Lord has done to my life. For a moment, I just forget all my pains and all my trouble, all the challenges in my life. I forget them for a moment because I'm just so focused on the joy that I've received from this good God. You know, it brings smiles in my face and I just begin to reflect on them. Meditate on God's testimony. And the last but not the least is on God's promises and assurance. On God's promises and assurance. You know, ability to look unto God for all that he has said and he has assured us. You know, as a young convert, when I hear the story of heaven, sometimes I just close my eyes and I just imagine heaven. How beautiful will it be to be there? There will be no more pain. The street made of gold. You know, I just begin to ponder on the beauty of heaven and the promises that Jesus is going to take me there someday. How about you begin to ponder on the promises of his word concerning your life? How, how about you take a minute and a, take a break from your current situation and realize that, you know what, I, I, I'm, I, I'm not going to focus on what or who I am right now. I'm going to focus on who I'm becoming. Because we are all becoming something. But what are you becoming? That's why I love the concept of growth. I love to grow because it gives me so much joy and it, 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 it kind of gets my eyes away from my current situation to where I'm going to be as long as I can keep growing. I'm going to quickly run through the benefits. Like I told you, I read the benefit from the research, but I want to read the benefit to you. We internalize scripture through meditation. That's number one benefit. You take the scripture from your head to your heart. You internalize it. David said in Psalm 119 verse 11, that word have I hid in my heart that I will not sin against you. Also, meditation helps us to build memories and imagination. Now, you know, I told you that one of the good things about meditation is that meditation is bringing your mind to discipline. Focusing your mind and your thought on God's word. So it's a mind walk. It's like taking your mind to the gym. When you, when you put your mind, when you meditate, you taking your mind to the gym. Do you know what the mind does? Everything in life that we become is a function of what is driving our minds. So as a man thinketh in his heart, so he becomes. So he is. So if there's nothing in this life that you can be more diligent, more disciplined about than your mind. And I'm, I'm glad when we're talking about the benefits, uh, we're looking at the research. One of the benefits is that it can help to kill addiction. Because addiction is a mind focus. You are so addicted in your heart to a certain thing. And the moment you begin to take your mind and refocus and redirect your mind, to something more important and beneficial to your life, addiction begins to go off. It's one of the ways. That's from Harvard. It's, it's a scientific findings. Amen. Benefits of meditation. Meditation is renewed in the place. I mean, our mind is renewed in the place of meditation. 
mind renewal starts from meditation. You know, Romans 12, 2 told us that we should not, we, we should, we, we should um, not, you know, participate in the thinking process of the world, in the way the world thinks. But we engage our mind in renewal and let our life be born from that process as a result of the renewing of our minds. Let our life begin to show difference. Because you see, the thing is, when you meditate, it gives you a new focus. It, it gives you God's perspective of life. Every time you meditate on the word, remember I told you, when you meditate on the word, it exposes you to how God is thinking. And meditation will make you think like God. Because when you meditate on God's word, and you get understanding from the word, you begin to think like God. Because it's in his word that is thinking is revealed, his, his purpose is revealed, his will is revealed through his words. Hallelujah. May I also say that meditation can lead to conviction because it's from the heart that we're convicted, it's from the heart that we believe. The more you meditate on God's word, the more you get a firm grip of that word. I'm somebody who hears a particular scripture and someone who internalizes that scripture and gets understanding and ponder on that scripture is definitely going to be different in outcome. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, one of the things that I did as um, a young believer, I, I realized early in time that for me to have healthy faith, I need to beware of toxic faith. There are certain things in our life that we do as Christians uh, or that we grew up doing that somebody taught us somewhere who probably didn't know better uh, taught us and we've been living in that and that has become um, our mindset that's built a perspective for us that is actually not what God expects of us. One of the first things I did was to begin to discover those toxic and those myths of faith. And a lot of those began to come forward for me in the process of meditation. You know, you can have wrong belief even as a believer. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Benefits of meditation. Peace is sustained in the place of meditation. We'll find peace when we meditate. Because meditation will expose you to the limit of your situation. No matter what you are going through, in the place of meditation, as you meditate on God's word, you will know that everything in your life, every issue and challenges in your life has expiration date. It's going to expire. How many of you know something that happened to you a year or two years ago and you thought you would never make it? But here you are, you are still standing because it will expire. The only thing that will never fade, the only thing that will never expire is that word of God. Why don't you keep your focus? Why don't you keep everything in it? Why don't you build your mind rock solid on God's words and promises? And lastly, the benefit of meditation as I'm beginning to bring the teaching to a close. Lastly, the benefit of meditation is God's voice is heard in stillness. You know, when we, when we stay cool and stay still and, and, and put all our thoughts you know, I, when I was teaching the discipline of prayers, I said that there are two ways that God speaks to you. He speaks to you through his word and through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And you, you verbally communicate back to God through prayers. And so when you meditate, when you stay in that place of stillness, the word of God, as it begins to reveal meaning into your heart, the Lord begins to speak to you. The Holy Spirit speaks to a still person, not a distracted person. You see, a long time ago when I caught the revelation of stillness and the fact that God speaks in still small voice, it changed my way of prayers. As a matter of fact, I try to pray now to, be, to, to, to make sure that I'm not distracting myself from that still small voice. 
I mean, who speaks to you in still small voice while you shout back at him? So my prayer life changed as I began to, oh, come, come, I mean, I read the scripture over and over again. So, so if God speaks in still small voice, why do I have to throw my fix in the air when, I, when I'm talking to him? That changed my prayer life forever. And it also led me. Because I, re I realized, you know, I said, well, sometimes the Spirit of God will, will direct my mind to look at my children. You know, when my children, when they want to tell me the most sensitive things, they say it in whispering. They don't come and shout, da, da. No, they call me. My daughter, will, especially my daughter, she's the best at it. That can I talk to you? I said, why not? She will come as if she wants to attach herself to me and just whisper. That's because she's placing a demand on me. And I say, I have to start doing like this girl to God when I want to talk to God too. These are some of the things that change my perspective. Psalm 19 verse 14. Said the word, may the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you. This is David speaking. Stand, just stay with me one minute. We're about to round up. Say, may the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you. What kind of meditation? Can you ever imagine the kind of meditation that will not be pleasing to God? You know, I told you that when we meditate on Satan's lies, fear is developed, not faith. So there's a meditation that is not pleasing to God. Meditation on your situation, on your circumstances, on your pain. Some people are already meditating on COVID-19 that, oh, after COVID-19, life is going to be so tough. Producing negative pronunciation. What are you meditating on? Like David, he wants the meditation of his heart to be pleasing to God. The meditation on what? What kind of meditation will be pleasing to God? In case you think that David didn't answer the question, I'll take it to Philippians 4.8. Maybe Apostle Paul answered the question. He says, and now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. He said, fix your thoughts. Apostle Paul, in other words, said, meditate. Keep your focus on what is true. Not what is fact. Fact is that this is your reality. But truth is what God plans your reality to be. I don't, you might be unemployed now. Maybe your boss just gave you the letter to go home. That's your fact. But the truth is that he will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. The truth is that he's a faithful God and he will look out for your own good. So Apostle Paul is advising you that if you must meditate, meditate on the things that are true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Hallelujah. As I bring this to a close, I want to take your mind to the last word of David in Psalm 19 verse 14. It says, may the, may the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. I just want to ask you, is he your redeemer? Are you redeemed? Are you saved? Now, this is the beginning of your journey. No matter what I've said today, the most important thing that you can take away from my message is that you need Jesus. If that's the only message I can preach, I would have loved it to just come up here and just say, hi, you need Jesus. Because that's the truth. Without Jesus, you're just going to meditate like someone who sits down and hoping that he will walk out of his own body. That's not the kind of meditation we're talking about. And you know, when we were talking about how you meditate, one of the things that we talked about is that you meditate on God's personality. 
one of his personalities is that he's a merciful God. And what a merciful God does is that he shows mercy. So I just want to encourage you to cry to the altar of mercy and ask God to, to take your heart. So that as you begin to take his word from your head to your heart, those words will begin to do you good. And like David, it will be hidden there in your heart that you will be able to obey his instructions. And precious Father, we are so grateful and we just love you so much because of how awesome you are. Thank you because your word is sufficient for us. If we can only reason with you in light of your words. Well, thank you because there's no issue in our life. There is no concern. There's no challenges of our life that your word has not given a solution to. And so we call upon you today, Lord, that the discipline of meditation will become our, you, you, our ritual going forward. That at every point in time, we will take we will start with as little as we can even if it's, if, if it's 60 seconds every day we will just block our mind away from everything but your word that we will begin to allow your word to make meaning to our life so that as we begin to obey those instructions our life will begin to account for it thank you for every young souls among us all those that have just said the sinner's prayer thank you for receiving them into your into your precious kingdom and, 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 and giving them your perspective. We appreciate and we love you, our precious Father. Blessed be your holy name forever. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen. On behalf of the church, we just want to say thank you for joining our service today. We love you. We we'll miss you. We can hardly wait to see you in church. And, 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 and despite the challenge and the situations out there, we we'll see that a lot of people are just givers and they keep giving and through your giving the church is able to help other people that are in need and like we say all the time if you know that you have needs and you want the church to to stand with you there's no better time as a matter of fact the church is excited to stand with you in time like this please don't fail to call us don't fail to tell us and um, because those that are giving uh, the best use of their giving this period is to support those that are in need so I just want to encourage you, if you have been giving, continue to give. Um, if you're watching this sermon on the app, there's the giving link on the app. You can click it. Uh, or you can just, you know, get on the website or get on any of our platform where we have the giving app. And you can give your offering through that platform. I pray that the Lord will see you through the week. That the best will be your portion as you go into this new week. In Jesus' name, amen. Happy Sunday, everybody. God bless you. Thank you for watching our Ignite service. Remember to share this video with friends and family. Check us out on social media to learn more about our church. God bless.